Hello there, kitties. I'm Kerry, the vacuum tube witch. And today, it's the second episode on the LOL PSR that I promised, because it was quite a rough ride. It was quite an adventure to tinker with this uh, drum synthesizer. Because uh, soon after I uh, thought it was uh, working, it died on me. Figures. Had a problem with the top board. Some uh, intermittent contact. And I thought it was gone. <laughs> but guess what? I got it back up and running, though it took replacing a uh, main uh, firmware ROM. I did it. Still no go. Then I uh, hunted the, the PCB for shorted traces or bad contacts. I. Uh, Resoldered uh, a lot of connections and finally got it. And uh, it even uh, it even passed uh, the stress tests, <laughs> like shaking and hitting and <laughs> all that kind of stuff that um, Dave Jones uh, knows very well. That is done mechanically. I did it by hand. <laughs> With those hands! <laughs> anyway, first I'd like to show you some materials on the LOL PSR that I used for working on, uh, on this device. One moment, please. So this would be a rewritten uh, original uh, user manual from uh, the Soviet Synthesizer Museum page. Let's uh, let's get a view on me too. Or maybe not. <laughs> so we've got uh, this website, uh, the Soviet uh, Synthesizer Museum. Muzei Sovietskich Synthesizerów and um, there's a short description of the LEL PSR. This, uh, this unit uh, looks just like the one that I was working on, but uh, there's also a different version with slightly different typography, slightly different graphic design on the front panel. And uh, there's a uh, short description uh, on the page, but uh, I also made uh, a uh, uh, take a take a look at at this. Uh, if you if you take a closer look at the logo, and if you take a look at. Uh, the inscriptions. This must have been an export version made for Western countries because all the descriptions were made in English. But I guess that uh, the mainstream uh, Soviet market version uh, looked like this. Looked uh, just like uh, looked just like mine with slightly more modern uh, logo type. <laughs> the old one was pretty funky, if you ask me. <laughs> and there's there are some files, uh, some uh, some sounds, samples from um, the LEL PSR, available for download um, at the bottom. And uh, there is also uh, a user manual, 
And this user manual is slightly different uh, from the paper original version um, that I uh, had a uh, doubtful pleasure of uh, taking, taking a look at and reading. So uh, this would be the rewritten uh, version of the user manual. It's in Times New Roman uh, Cyrillic. And it's way uh, more readable than the original manual. <laughs> and if I if I knew about this <laughs> I would have uh, used um, this version uh, for translating. Uh, it would be less pesky. So let's Take a look at and the pseudo graphics. Uh, the original manual also has uh, pseudo graphics. Uh, it's uh, it's all it's all text. <laughs> this is not text, but uh, the the VFD descriptions. Uh, those diagrams, this is actually text, um, can be ocr <laughs> And this is the battery diagram, uh, it is pretty confusing, I will mention it uh, in, uh, when I uh, get to the band. So this would be the rewritten uh, original user manual, but this is what I have done. My translation roughly translated from the original Russian user manual in, uh, in uh, August uh, 2023 by Curry, the vacuum tube witch, software of Curry Tech Electronics. Yes, uh, and so uh, I uh, made uh, all the all the descriptions. Uh, I did the translation uh, from uh, Russian to English, sometimes uh, using uh, Google Translate uh, as a dictionary. And um, this uh, this version of the user manual. <laughs> I um, I made uh, all the all the notes uh, all the info that was not contained in the user manual the original one it's uh, it's about uh, programming the um, the rhythms and songs uh, this is the most interesting part because I uh, I noticed uh, when reading uh, the information I was working with uh, from uh, Edward Ditek and uh, Dmitry Dubrovenko that uh, the PSR never really had the MIDI interface they were working on it. It was implemented in the PCB design, but it was never implemented in the firmware unless the MIDI control routines uh, were coded on a uh, another missing ROM chip. Because uh, it was uh, possible to extend uh, the control firmware to to 27C16 um, EPROM chips. <laughs> Unfortunately, neither me nor uh, people who were way more experienced um, in the LPSR system architecture 
disassembled and understood uh, the firmware. It was made for a COP402 microcontroller. And while uh, there is some uh, COP400 uh, series uh, disassembler, there is uh, no assembler I know of. So even if someone uh, disassembled um, the firmware, analyzed um, the assembly language code, there would be probably be no way of uh, reassembling the firmware to upload it to the chip. So, modifying the firmware, good luck with that. Unless you write it all from scratch. But still, you would have to be able to compile it and upload it to work with the COP402. Either you would have to use a uh, C compiler or an assembler, but uh, there's none I know of. Anyway, some notes on, uh, on the project that uh, the unit I, I was working on, it was built uh, in May uh, 91 or later. That's, uh, that's what I figured out uh, from the date markings on the integrated circuits. I had to reprogram uh, some uh, RAM chips. For the sample uh, ROMs, I had to replace two of them and program them uh, from scratch. I used uh, the original Soviet uh, <coughs> Soviet uh, ROM chip. And for the firmware, I used uh, a Western uh, 27C16. And those uh, Soviet uh, those Soviet chips, uh, let me Good. I uh, what what was the marking of on those? I got it somewhere in my engineering handbook, but <coughs> but yes, uh, KR five seven three RF five the Epram chip. That would be an equivalent of 27C16, if not for one important parameter. It uses 25 volts programming voltage, so I had to make an adapter in order to be able to program it with a TL866 programmer and uh, a mini pro software i will show you um, the adapter how i uh, how i did it i had to design and make make a new one <laughs> a bit of a challenge but i did it and anyway uh, yes the, the manual features the mini midi functionality the sockets are on the back panel, but uh, they are not wired. The opto coupler on the MIDI interface uh, and the UART uh, interface chip uh, are both missing. So, the LPSR outwardly, apparently, has the MIDI functionality, but it was never implemented. And uh, this was probably because of the licensing issues. But the manufacturer should have made uh, the MIDI-capable uh, version uh, 
with the sockets and with uh, the section included in the user manual. And the regular version shouldn't have had uh, those sockets at all. And the manual shouldn't have featured uh, the, the section on, on MIDI. But it does. <laughs> That's pretty curious. So, let's get over to the bench. And I've got this uh, drum machine in a discombobulated state. With the top panel made of plastic and elastic. Pretty rugged and long lasting. <laughs> what I also noticed is um, that uh, the, the screen, uh, the, the cover for the VFD is green. Let me grab a flashlight to show you. My trusty Maglite flashlight, real deal American stuff. <laughs> yeah, VFD cover is green, but uh, I have uh, seen a YouTube video um, with a different color. Slightly reddish or orange. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't exactly remember. So what I did on this unit would be replacing the RAM chip. Let's get a better view on this. So this is the main uh, app RAM chip. This is the microcontroller and uh, the microcontroller, unlike uh, the usual microcontrollers uh, most uh, people in electronics and engineering uh, have um, had uh, a uh, pleasure or a lack thereof to work with. This one uh, doesn't uh, have any any flash memory. It uses an external uh, RAM chip, uh, and uh, the the way it does uh, is pretty interesting in itself because um, the microcontroller has uh, a uh, a line uh, that switches the read uh, and uh, then the data in uh, and address out uh, modes uh, <coughs> on the ROM interface. In, uh, in one state uh, on the line, uh, it's uh, if I if I go for my engineering uh, notebook, <laughs> so some uh, Soviet IC cross referencing, different projects, pinouts for the for the ROM. So uh, for the for this input. A, a description of uh, I/O ports on uh, on the COP402. There is uh, there is the add uh, slash uh, negative data. So uh, in high state uh, on the pin number thirty three. 
the microcontroller sends out uh, the address uh, on the IP port and uh, in the low state uh, on the address slash uh, negative data it uh, accepts data on uh, this port and in order to hold uh, the data for for reading by the microcontroller a uh, octopal uh, latch uh, is used and uh, the RAM plus latch uh, it is uh, specified in the COP402 datasheet, the, the original western one. That is pretty interesting. And uh, let's, uh, let's move on to what the other integrated circuits do on this unit. I made a uh, block diagram with uh, with the reverse engineered uh, control board that's a little bit of insanity <laughs> and behold another diagram of discombobulation this is the diagram of discombobulation. Uh, the rectangles correspond to the chips on uh, on this board, and it's pretty complicated. There's a uh, keyboard. Those two chips would be the keyboard controllers. It's it's 10 lines, uh, it's multiplexed over uh, 10 rows and uh, 10 uh, columns and 3 rows. <laughs> but let's take a look at a slightly recombobulated uh, system architecture diagram. So this would be the microcontroller having a 4-bit uh, data output for driving the synchronization uh, counters. Uh, it uses uh, BCD to decimal uh, decoders, uh, counters, uh, like uh, Something like uh, 74, 141 uh, if you are into the Nixie stuff, but uh, this, uh, this actually is uh, 4028. So uh, low level uh, output uh, voltage. So the COP402 is uh, coupled with, uh, with the system ROM. And uh, if uh, if the LAL PSR was MIDI capable, <coughs> it would probably have uh, another ROM in this position. I soldered the socket into um, into the place um, in order to switch uh, between uh, two ROMs uh, if I was experimenting on uh, on the unit. But it will be unpopulated. And uh, on the main data bus, uh, we've got a lot of peripherals. First one, it would be this, uh, this uh, register controlling the bottom uh, DAC board. Then we would have uh, another register here that uh, controls the display. It uh, 
it has uh, one nibble uh, for controlling the positions, the grids uh, of the VFD, and uh, the other nibble controls uh, the segments, the anodes. Then there's the memory control uh, bidirectional uh, register located here and it controls all the memory on this board apart from the system uh, firmware ROM and uh, as for the memory on, on the control board we've got ROM this is the tab uh, ROM, tabby, and smash. <laughs> then the tab ROM uh, stores um, the predefined uh, rhythms uh, on uh, the LLPSR. Rhythms number 1 to 31. And uh, there are also three ROM chips. They store the custom programmable rhythms and songs. The device uh, can um, be programmed with uh, eight songs and uh, and uh, 64 rhythms from uh, 32 to 96. So uh, now, from uh, 33 to 96, and the predefined uh, reference would be from 1 to 32. So they all uh, are stored in those three chips. So if your little PSR has problems uh, with, uh, with programming the, the reference or songs, it would probably be one of those chips failing. And uh, there is uh, also a uh, factory assembly issue on the original LPSR that just kills the battery backup because uh, LPSR has a uh, battery container with uh, four AA batteries. And it is supposed to to power the RAM chips uh, when uh, when the power supply uh, is uh, disconnected or the unit is turned off. It should last for at least uh, four thousand hours. But there was a slight problem located here. See, the, the way the connector was soldered, or to be precise, um, the insulating shim uh, underneath the connector, it had, uh, it had holes in it, and some of the contacts made a short circuit to the positive pole uh, of the battery, shorting it out. So that killed the batteries, and that made uh, battery backup very unreliable. And I uh, desoldered um, the connector, changed the, the insulating shim, reassembled it, and now it's working. And if you take a closer look here, those are the MIDI con those are the MIDI connectors, both uh, the DIN type. They are not soldered at all. And the manual mentions them. Originally there would be a UART interface chip right here and a uh, optocoupler 
placed uh, right next to it. And this would probably be the MIDI connector. But those parts are missing. Just like the additional firmware ROM was missing. Maybe some initial versions uh, of the LAL PSR featured those components. But uh, given uh, the fact that uh, back in the, uh, in the 80s and 90s uh, the MIDI standard was closed and proprietary and uh, license fees uh, applied, then the manufacturer cut the costs uh, by uh, not uh, including the MIDI standard uh, connectivity. So they might have either dropped uh, the MIDI support or never have implemented it in the first place. And what I also did uh, on the LAL PSR was replacing all the original buttons with uh, modern uh, tact switches because those buttons were very unreliable. This is how those Soviet tact switches looked like. And I had a little bit uh, of a problem finding the replacement uh, that would be uh, of the same dimensions. I had to bend the, the leads uh, apart, clear the holes and uh, solder those uh, in the old holes. But that works. So those buttons would be for the individual instruments. Sounds like percussive instruments, doesn't it? It used to be worse. This would be the stop button, this would be the start button. This would be the rhythm button. So let's start the first rhythm, the bossa nova. Take a look at the last number. It's the number of, uh, of steps, of uh, notes uh, in the bar. Stop it! And moving on to the second bossa nova. Slightly different. Samba! This would be Kazachok, a uh, Russian or Ukrainian, uh, I don't exactly know, traditional, traditional dance. I kind of like this rhythm. Swing. This one has a different meter. It counts uh, up to 12 steps. So that would probably be the 3 4th. 
I know nothing of music theory. Please be patient with me. That would be the boss. Not exactly sure what it is. Big Bend. Tango. Rock Disco Reggae Les Ginka Another Russian uh, traditional dance I like this rhythm. March. This is called heavy metal. I don't exactly know what it has in common with actual heavy metal. <laughs> and this would be slow rock. Third uh, would be the custom rhythm. There's some predefined content um, in those slots uh, if you don't program your own. So it's time to put it back together. Commencing system recombobulation. The main data connector is a little bit short, but it's still possible to put um, both parts uh, next to each other. And by the way, looking at, uh, at the top part, it has uh, a few factory modifications. This would be my own modification to install the second ROM chip.
And of course, let's grab the screws. Those two we save for later because they are they connect uh, both parts of the enclosure together. Populating the holes. Doing it the fantastic way. Uh, first uh, do it by hand. Turn backward. Let me uh, let me show ya. If you have a screw, place it uh, with your hand if you can. Turn it backwards uh, until it drops. And then turn it forwards uh, by hand. And uh, this is how you avoid cross uh, threading the plastic. we can do it with the screwdriver of course using the common mechanics uh, rules of uh, of uh, screwing them uh, on the opposite sides There, all done. Time to take a closer look at the bottom board. There's, uh, there's one, uh, no, there's two modifications that I did on uh, on this uh, little PSR. One is a serial diode um, in line with the positive um, supply, preventing the, the device from uh, being damaged uh, if you connect a uh, center negative power supply by mistake. The other modification was uh, rewiring the headphone output jack so that uh, it had uh, signal both on the tip and uh, the ring. Originally the ring was grounded and uh, the PSR would feed into the left channel on the headphones but not the right channel. Then the original circuit uh, for the headphones uses this uh, operational amplifier 
It's a UD608, roughly an uh, equivalent um, of uh, 741. And uh, it feeds uh, a sum of uh, left and right channel into the headphones. So, that would be the reverse engineered uh, schematic of the audio output uh, from the LPSR. There's a summing node and uh, a feedback resistor. And uh, this, uh, the output uh, feeds into the headphone socket. Why they uh, didn't uh, include um, the stereo headphone output, it's beyond me. Maybe they found it a little bit too difficult to make uh, a real deal uh, stereo uh, output section, but uh, but there's a lot of room on the, on the board. It could be done, I mean. It could be done. Come on. Come on, Soviet engineers, you could have done better. Put them up against the wall. <laughs> Just kidding. Gotta be careful putting this thing back together to fit the data interface uh, between the boards uh, so that the connector or cables uh, don't uh, get in the way. I'll start with with those screws. Turn them by hand. Included washers on and uh, on, uh, on those uh, screws uh, to to prevent uh, damage uh, to the plastic. If you take a closer look, at the, at the data cable, it shouldn't uh, get under the plug. Otherwise, uh, you have trouble reinstalling it. Should have used a different connector. Maybe lay it horizontally. Now time to attach the battery compartment. This was the original seal. The warranty has been void uh, for a long time.
So there it is! All puts together. And again. Power switch, DC input, left output, right output, headphone output, audio output, and the non-functional MIDI, and the battery compartment. I'm, I made some markings uh, on the cover. Because uh, it's very easy to put the batteries the wrong way. The spring-loaded contact uh, should be for the negative. But uh, one of them is for the positive and the other one is for the negative pole. And that's why I made the markings uh, with red uh, nail polish. So that the owner of the unit uh, doesn't confuse uh, the poles. Fortunately, there's an inline diode uh, preventing the, um, the wrong polarity, damaging the RAM chips. But generally, it's a bad design. So, power it up with the batteries. Inserting those batteries, uh, it's a little bit tricky as well. Look at that. Thing of beauty. So, time for some testing. Watch your ears, the sound is now coming back. Oh, I turned the amplifier down, fortunately. If I put something under here, we'll have a better view on the VFD. Those, uh, those two keys uh, are for volume adjustment. From 1 to 64. And if you turn it up to 2 from 1, you actually start hearing the sound. Unfortunately, volume control will be reset after turning the unit off and on again. Anyway, I can also show you how to program a song. First we press the song button and hold it down. Change the song slot with plus and minus. This is the first song. Then, in order to go into the programming mode, press uh, shag, the step button, or meter, the metronome button. There's an indication uh, that uh, the device is now in the programming mode. Maybe I will turn off the light at the bench, so that uh, you can see the VFD. Look at that thing of beauty! Joy forever! Ah, it has some difficulty focusing. It has some difficulty focusing. Does it have ADHD? A little bit more light. So, 
So, we're working on, um, on the first uh, bar of, um, of the song. And uh, in order to copy a rhythm uh, into the bar, we can uh, we can uh, hold down the rhythm key and uh, use uh, the plus and minus keys to select um, the desired uh, rhythm. Maybe let's uh, let's do the um, first Kazachok, second Kazachok, and then again first Kazachok and second Kazachok. After choosing the rhythm, release the rhythm button and press the copy button. And then the bar will automatically change to the second one. Set D8 Watch the VFD Set 7 Copy Not sure why there was uh, 35 here Copy and uh, I'm pretty satisfied with how it went. Let's press stop to save the song and exit the programming mode. Start the song. The device has a little bug. If you if you're in the programming mode and uh, change the first rhythm and save it, you'll see in the programming mode uh, that uh, there was this seventh rhythm, but after you play it. It replaces um, the seventh rhythm uh, in the first bar with the first rhythm. I'm not exactly sure why it does it. It uh, it shouldn't be this way. Uh, I think it was a firmware bug. And uh, programming the um, the rhythms, uh, I haven't really gotten a grip on uh, how to do it but uh, I translated that part of um, the instruction manual I will have to experiment with it let's get back to the desk that would be the little PSR Finally repaired. Maybe, maybe let's do some stress testing on it <laughs> to ensure that it will won't uh, stop working uh, out of the blue like it did on me. I was uh, I was about to make a second video on the LPSR last Friday. Not uh, not before this weekend, but uh, a week earlier, and it was uh, it was sitting there turned on, and out out of the blue, suddenly the VFD died. It stopped working. I was going to send it out to the customer that day. Took me some more time to get it back to work. It was frustrating. Believe me, it was mighty frustrating to pin down 
the malfunction. I used my trusty Tektronix 468 scope and uh, some of the some of the data lines uh, on the microcontrollers were silent. <laughs> I did the reverse engineering thing uh, on the control board. That's why that's how I uh, know so much about it. Plus the data from the Edward Ditek and uh, Dmitry Dubrovenko websites. But uh, the data from those websites was incomplete. They didn't have, uh, they didn't even have the system architecture block diagram. Let alone uh, any detailed uh, diagram of uh, how things works, work uh, apart from, um, from the memory addressing uh, part and uh, the keyboard part. But all else, uh, like uh, VFD control, or uh, all the communications, all the timing, that, uh, that was not uh, featured on those sites. It was all unknown. So I reverse engineered it. <laughs> because I am the vacuum tube which I can do that. And uh, I will share the, the info I found out uh, on Hackaday. Feel free to use it. Stay determined, carry on, and have fun. Bye!